So it's wonderful to be here. Um, I hope that uh, uh, you will have a chance of uh, talking to each other, the organizers of DITANI, uh, the projects that are being uh, um, uh, illustrated and promoted. Uh, this is really a very strong community. Uh, and it is interesting to be in Silicon Valley for the first time. I uh, uh, like uh, to continue these conversations. And as DITANI moves on, and uh, I will be traveling with them uh, to other places, I hope that many of you will follow us either in person or keep reaching out with your questions, with your ideas, because this community is about exploring uh, the future. That is what we are going to do in the next uh, 10, 15 minutes together, based on uh, exponential technologies, uh, which is what Singularity University uh, is, is about and how they change the world, understanding uh, weak signals before they become evident to uh, everybody. Uh, there are about uh, uh, 7 billion people who have no idea uh, about blockchain technologies, Bitcoin, and, and you are part of the early, early, early uh, group of adopters who uh, are uh, asking themselves, is this for real? Uh, and, and once it is possible to distinguish uh, the uh, signal from the noise when the exponential trends disrupt what is happening and uh, uh, overcome incontrovertibly the linear interpolations. That is when uh, a successive generations uh, of technologies is able to uh, really change the world, which is, I believe, what we are doing. Uh, the, uh, beauty of, of being here is, is to be able to refer uh, to the incredible intuition that uh, Gordon Moore formulated over 50 years ago, based on barely a few data points. You know, not uh, a thousand, not a hundred, not even ten data points. He said, "Wow, there is something really going on here. If we work hard, we should be able to keep doubling." the number of components on an integrated circuit in whatever amount of time. And after formulating that, which you know, many years later became known as, Gore, uh, as Moore's uh, law, everybody in the world who were a specialist in the field got working to, uh, to prove right his self-fulfilling uh, prophecy. And this used to be a, a bunch of uh, orchards uh, 50, 60 years ago. This is what Silicon Valley was. And Silicon Valley is uh, today what it is because of the creative and passionate people who were working in the garages. And you know, yesterday I was driving uh, around here with my uh, uh, videographer and documentarist uh, who uh, 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 traveled for the first time to, to, to the valley. And he was, he was telling me, he's uh, uh, in the back there, Emil, was telling me, I bet that today those creative and passionate people are working in their garages still. And, and it's true, they are. Just as Hewlett Packard uh, was born in a garage, there are uncountable, incredibly world-changing ideas that are being worked on in, in the garages uh, uh, all over. And the um, semiconductor industry, as well as the technology of venture capital, which is itself finance is a technology, venture capital is a technology, is what made Silicon Valley in the past. The first internet boom created trillions of dollars of value, and they did not go to zero. It didn't matter that uh, the crazy valuations crashed. If you look at the lifetime uh, value of uh, you know, a very representative stock of, of the first internet boom, Cisco Systems, you see that surely it is still on a path of delivering value as measured by the public market. And it is still uh, delivering technologies that uh, the past 20 years of economic growth uh, were based on. This is not new. This is what has been happening for thousands of years. 
The difference is that when we build the pyramids, there was one guy who could decide what to do. It was the pharaoh, and he said, let's build a pyramid. And then tens of thousands of people got around and said, OK, that's what you say. Let's build a pyramid. And, and there was no way that other people could have other dreams. That, or maybe they did have other dreams, but there was no way they could uh, realize those dreams in their lifetimes. During the Middle Ages, we invented other technologies, and then more and more people started to be able to say, well, I guess, uh, yes, my father was a, 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 a vassal, and I'm a vassal. But maybe my great, great, great grandchildren won't be vassals anymore. They started to have dreams that slowly but surely became realities to the point where if a couple of generations ago or three or four generations ago, the investment would be in your children because you believed that their lives could be better if you invested in them, today many people understand that the investment is in you. Because you have the power, together with billions of people, to improve your own life if you understand what is going on around the world. And a lot of the frustration that we see comes from the fact that too many people feel powerless because they don't understand what is going on. And as we search uh, for evolutionarily sustainable solutions to create resilient societies around us, it is really, really important to make sure that the progression of technology that created the hardware solutions that today uh, are uh, touching the very limits of what is physically possible uh, do not stop. Nation states have been incredibly successful. Uh, actually, today it is hard, even if technically possible, not to belong as a human being to a nation state and live under uh, the rules and the regulations and the requirements of, of a nation state. This kind of hierarchical organization that is reflected in turn in how our enterprises and corporations work um, has been um, wonderful in, in delivering certain things, good and bad, but today, an alternative is emerging. An alternative where organizations are decentralized, they have uh, uh, the structure of a network, and that is what I call the network society, both in terms of creating economic value, but also in terms of empowering and emancipating people who participate freely in an aggregation that may coexist with a nation state but that delivers superior opportunities for realizing their dreams. The assumption is that actually society is a reflection of the technology that is available at a given time. And there can be a lot of dreams of people who believe that slavery is not right. But imagine if Spartacus has won uh, their slave rebellion during the Roman times uh, uh, 2,000 years ago. Spartacus would be sitting down around the fire after the victory night and drawing the uh, shortest straw to decide who has to prepare dinner. And then the, the, the day after, they would draw the, the shortest straw to decide who's got to be the slave because they wouldn't be able to build a society that didn't have slavery. On the other hand, Today's decentralized technologies have to prove themselves able to deliver superior results to the previous centralized ones. And once they prove that, then the change becomes unstoppable. Just like slavery is now illegal all over the world, and if you ask somebody do you need slaves to build this building, contrary to the Colosseum that the Romans built? Uh, and, and, and you would not only be laughed at, but, but it would be a really weird question to ask. We will build a new society that will be the expression of the technologies that we are now uh, making possible. This is happening in many uncorrelated industries, solar, uh, in energy is decentralized. 3D printing 
allows you to rapidly prototype a solution without sending a million uh, unit order to the Chinese. Hydroponics, synthetic meat, vertical farming in food production, personalized health, peer-to-peer -peer learning, and as we know, blockchain in, in finance, belong to a broader and deeper context where you understand how the trust networks create a society where policymaking itself must be up to date with the needs and the requirements of our forming 21st century civilization. And when you look at the broader and deeper context, you realize that there can be hundreds of times that Bitcoin is declared dead. There can be thousands of articles both by incumbent interests that uh, label ICOs uh, scam and, and, and all of you um, as, as self-deluded that this will go anywhere. But if it is unstoppable, as I believe it is, then the question really is to build a toolbox of solutions that can support the new organizations that empower and emancipate billions of people who can learn how to participate in this society to create dignity and to create a community because billions today are totally excluded from doing so. And it cannot go on like this. Now, it is funny that experts pretend to know what are the uh, parameters and what are the contours of a future they don't understand better than anybody else. When heavier than air flight happens, what is the destiny of the reputation uh, of the world's leading physicist that just a few years before declared it was utterly impossible? It is the same destiny uh, of a company that dominated it, its industry for 100 years and more, but could not understand what was happening with the digital revolutions. It is the same destiny of a company that was uh, leading uh, its, uh, uh, its world. Now, we know that decoding is of the future is hard. We have no guarantees. We need billions of people. But luckily, there are no, no barriers of participation. We are building open source business models through our white papers. We are interoperating naturally in new kinds of platforms. And the tokens are viral distribution mechanisms. The uh, State Department of the United States organized in 2014 uh, a conference that spoke about the diminishing role of uh, government uh, in today's world. And that uh, new systems require uh, ways where destructive elements can be stopped requires creativity and imagination is something that I totally agree with. Bureaucracies resist, are in a state of panic, and they are going to overreact. They are overreacting already. But they cannot cope with the rate of change because the future is already here. It may not be in the United States. It may not be in Silicon Valley. It is certainly not evenly distributed, but that it is happening because it is unstoppable is absolutely true. Dinosaurs did not have telescopes. We do have the telescopes of reason. We must use them in order to create a new social contract, which is not a natural law. The old social contract is not going to uh, be um, the basis of what is happening today. We are creating new degrees of freedom. We are increasing the choices that yourselves and everybody else can take advantage of. Unbounded opportunities await us. And I'm sure that you want to be part of this as well. I invite you to uh, give me your contact details so that I can update you on how to be part of the forthcoming Network Society. Thank you very much.